Hello, and welcome to, or welcome back to, Project Apollo, my series on a cattle seed world. Seed worlds are speculative evolution projects where a planet is seeded with Earth life, which is then left to evolve and diversify in this new context. On planet Apollo, these life forms were cattle, which along with some plants and invertebrates were left to fill every niche on the planet. In the last episode, we saw cattle growing into enormous megafauna, but that's not the only extreme they'd take. Some cattle might go the opposite direction, evolving to be small. Before we continue, I'd like to remind you to consider subscribing. It's free, and you can always change your mind. While you're there, smash that like button and leave a comment. We recently reached 20,000 subscribers, so thank you so much, everyone. Also, I asked the comments in the last video to name the two clades of megafaunal cattle mentioned. I'll be calling the clade of large-bodied grazers Enchyla bovis, meaning armored cow. The clade of massive browsers will be called Gigantotherium, meaning huge beast. Finally, I'll be naming the large-bodied minophilus Tyranotaurus, a name I thought of for once a along with several viewers. Thank you for all your splendid suggestions, and with that out of the way, let's get back to the video. The transition from large-bodied specialists to small-bodied generalists has rarely happened on Earth, probably because there's usually small vertebrates already occupying the niche. Large, specialized animals are generally more likely to disappear after mass extinctions than less specialized ones. But on Apollo, no small vertebrates exist, and invertebrates are the only competition in the way of tiny cattle. Cattle might grow small for a variety of reasons. In the initial population boom on Apollo, grazing land became scarce. Requiring less food would be a huge advantage, so many cattle might evolve smaller bodies to require less energy. Most small vertebrates, as far as I'm aware of, don't seem to be specialized in eating grass, so perhaps these cattle would prefer more nutritious plants such as Apollo's legumes, and, as they grow smaller, insects. Most cattle on Apollo would probably eat bugs amongst the grass already, either intentionally or just because they don't care. But dedicated insectivores might not evolve early on due to bugs often being too fast or agile to catch. However, as cattle grow smaller, they might be able to match this agility and hunt insects as their primary food source. This would require more than small changes to their bodies, becoming tiny, energetic animals, perhaps resembling small ungulates like the Java mouse deer. Long legs, faster metabolisms, and upper molars brought forward to replace their soft dental pads might be common adaptions among the most small-bodied clades. Their agility would be crucial, protecting themselves from larger cattle or even Arctosa Titan, which might be able to overpower the smallest cattle and turn them into a meal. Speaking of beef, the evolution of carnivorous cattle would drastically change Apollo. The prairies might become less crowded thanks to predation, but this increased space comes with the risk of being someone's lunch. Minophilus is a predatory cattle with specialized jaws for delivering a killing bite, and their presence would only compound the situation. The smallest species of cattle would probably always be on the menu for opportunistic cows looking to add some protein to their diet, carnivore or not. As tiny cattle grow better at avoiding large predators, some Minophilus might specialize for hunting them. They'd probably evolve smaller bodies for greater agility and stealth, and conservation of energy, and perhaps perhaps evolve short legs to enter burrows or long tails for maneuverability. While most large carnivores hunt animals bigger than themselves, these minophilus could hunt several tiny cattle each day, living similarly to wild cats or foxes. But they might have competition in the form of small insectivores that also developed a taste for steak. Life on Apollo has grown far more dangerous for small cattle. To avoid being eaten, defensive strategies would have to be evolved. An early defense might be burrowing. Perhaps some cattle develop thick, clawed hooves for digging underground, allowing them to escape predators and find buried food, like nutritious roots or Neotitanoptera larva. As plants on Apollo develop thick wooden stems and evolve into trees, another defense strategy might be living off the ground. This would provide relief from predators too large to climb and give access to any food in the trees. Of course, climbing would be difficult with hooves, so perhaps they could revert them into some type of foot or split their hooves into two claws. Other cattle might go for deterrence rather than avoidance, perhaps developing their fur into porcupine-like quills. They could still live out in the open and be relatively slow moving, but attacking them would be extremely difficult if you don't want a face full of quills. Perhaps some cattle could even develop poison or symbiosis with dangerous plants, although I'm not not sure how likely that is to develop. These are only a few of the many adaptations these tiny cattle might take, now that a wide range of new niches has been opened up to them. And if anything cataclysmic ever happens, these generalists would likely be the future for Apollo. Thanks for watching! If you want more speculative evolution content, consider subscribing. Smash that like button and leave a comment if you have any thoughts on the video. I believe it's time for an episode on flying cattle, although I might make an episode on other herbivore adaptations first. Also, consider checking out my Patreon. I'd appreciate any support on there, if you're in a position to do so, although watching these videos is certainly enough. You can find a link to that in the description. Anyway, thanks for watching, have a great day, and I'll see you next time!